Hello all you wonderful people of the internet. Today I'm going to be reviewing... Why am I holding this up? Today I'm going to be reviewing All Quiet on the Western Front, so without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so... Recently on my Witcher Blood of Elves review, I was asked by one of my viewers to review All Quiet on the Western Front, which was a film that I had watched recently. I haven't watched it since, but my memory of the film is actually pretty good, um, enough so that I feel that I can talk about it to a relative degree of accuracy, which I think speaks to the quality of the film itself that I remember so much about it. But um, that's why I'm talking about this today, and I'm actually quite excited to talk about this film because it's um, an interesting point of discussion. It opens up a lot of, you know, things to talk about when it comes to war, because this is a war film, and actually one of the only war films that I have watched, the only one that comes to mind as well, is 1917, so I'm not really a veteran, ha 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 pun, of the genre, so I can't compare this to many other war films, I can't really speak on how it holds up in that genre, or whether what was done in this film has been done before or better elsewhere. So please take everything I say with a pinch of salt. Maybe there are better films out there, but for me, this is a, this is tied with 1917 because on a technical level, I really appreciated 1917 for what it was, how it had this style of feeling like it was one continuous take that made you really feel the journey the characters were going on. So I, I, I really liked 1917 on a, te a technical level, but I remember being a lot more invested in the story of All Quiet. So they tie, which is, so <laughs> there we are, that's where I stand on the two more films I have seen. But without any more waffling, let's get into what I want to say about this film, which I've got on my notes down here. I, I'll hold them here so that I'm not looking down. Um, so... Um, I think one well, of the most interesting, f oh, four spoilers by the way, sorry, I nearly just ruined the film <laughs> before saying spoilers, but yeah, there's going to be um, four spoil spoilers for this film, mainly it's ending throughout this review, so if you haven't seen this film, if you intend to see this film, click off now and come back later if you want to. Okay, so, one of the things that stood out to me in this film was its perspective. Now, maybe it's been done before, as I said, I don't know, but this film was from the perspective of a German soldier called Paul Baumer in kind of the, the end of World War One. I. I couldn't tell you the exact battle that he's fighting in or the exact area, as I said, it's been a while, but that's the setup. He's a, he's a young soldier, I believe he's even underage if I remember, he wasn't actually legally allowed to join the army, I think he lied. But, um, or, or some of his friends did anyway. But he's a young soldier who's joined the German army, um, believing that the war is being won and that he's going to join the army and, the, and he'll win the war for the fatherland in a few months, which is, of course, a lie. And it's about him and his friends as they're exposed to the brutality of the war and being on the losing side. Now, I did watch this film in German, which with subtitles, of course, which really enhanced the whole viewing experience for me because it, you know, if I had the subtitles on, no, if I had the dub on, I think the the unique perspective of it being with the Germans would have been somewhat lessened by you feeling, because in the end, war is war, and both, and that's that's one of the themes of the film. War is war, and both sides are having a terrible time. So if you have the dub on then you kind of, you, well you definitely do lose the uniqueness of following the Germans because then you're just as easily following um, U European soldiers. Well no, Germans are European, but um, the other side, I, 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 could, I, I did once know the, the two sides in this war, like the, the, I think one of them was the Triple Alliance and then there was a French name. I believe the Germans were the Triple Alliance, but there that's probably me. Being, yeah, I think I think the French name was the side that the English were on, which I should know, but I don't. And the Triple Alliance was the Germans, the Italians, I believe, and someone else. But that's my really poor historical knowledge there, which I should know more of. I just remembered; it just hit me. The um, the the the, the alliance that the UK was on was the Triple Entente, I believe. So there we are. I've remembered it. So um, what else have I got down? 
Oh yeah, so, as I said, this perspective makes for some really, a really interesting take on the events, and I feel, I was, I went into this expecting the main interest to be it's a German soldier, but there was a lot that this film, more so than 1917, really exposed what it was like to be a soldier, because this takes you on the trip of these characters throughout when they join the army, when they get onto the front lines, and when the war's over, you see the full development of the soldiers, and I think, I'm guessing anyway, that this isn't done as much, at least, uh, probably not the aftermath that you see in this film. So, the perspective, yet again, you get this, what I'm assuming is new, take on on the war story and so it opens up a whole load of roots for conversation that I'm going to talk about later on. Now you may uh, you may notice that I have said that I'm not getting into the good and bad things here and that's because All Quiet on the Western Front is not my favourite film. In fact I don't even really think that it's in my top 10. I know what my top 5 are but I don't know fully what my top 10 are but I don't think all Quiet on the Western Front is in my top 10. But regardless of that, I do consider All Quiet on the Western Front to be a flawless film in its execution of what it's trying to get across. I think it did everything it was trying to do marvellously, and so I can't, I can't fault it, because it, it ticked every box that it was meant to tick. So that's why I'm not going to say the good and bads, so this is all just me talking about why this film is good and what it means. Yeah, again, probably not the best person to be talking about that, but I, I want to, because this is a good film, and one of my friends who actually recommended it to me is really passionate about this film and what it means and how it portrays being a soldier, and I've been talking to them about that recently, and so that's really renewed my interest in talking about it, because as I said, this is, as I've gathered, uh, a unique film. Now, one thing <laughs> that I do remember is that, that I remember quite a lot actually is the brutality in this film and not in the violence don't get me wrong the violence is awful um, there were moments where I was just sitting there with my eyes half closed I was wincing and cringing because it didn't pull any punches when it came to portraying the violence whether it's people being burned alive crushed by tanks stabbing themselves all of it was there for you to see and all you could do was look away but you're transfixed by how horrifying what you're seeing on the screen is but the brutality does not is not just in the violence as as much as it is in portraying the futility of the situation that our main cast of characters find themselves in because this story is not just about Paul Bulmer forgive me if I'm saying that wrong it's also about um, um, Matthias Erz Erzberger I'm assuming that's how I pronounce it um, who is a um, I, I can't remember who he is exactly but he is Important in the German government or military because he is one of the people who's making who's agreeing to sign the Treaty of Versailles Which is gonna end the war and eventually arguably leads to World War two But you through him and his interactions with people you get to see how the The hesitation of the higher-ups and the higher-ups personal beliefs you see how they influence the lives of the soldiers and specifically at the end, um, one of the, I think he might have been a general or something, decides that he's not going to let the war end until the exact striking of the 11th hour, 11th hour, and so all the soldiers who believe that they're going to go home are forced back out onto the field of battle at the final moments of the war, and you really get to feel how pointless it all is, especially when Paul Balmer actually dies at the end and when he gets his mortal wound, when he gets stabbed by a bayonet, that's when the 11th hour strikes. And so there you really get the sense of how pointless all this death was, how little the soldiers were in the grand scheme of things. And just with the signing, it took days, and days were being taken to think about it. And I remember Matthias was, or Matthias was, very, was frustrated about how thousands of people were dying every day while they tried to figure out whether they were going to sign this treaty. So. On both sides of the spectrum, you're really shown just the brutality of war from the the gore to the pointlessness of it all Which and as I've said this film I think was flawless in presenting all of that because I was seething by the end because my favorite character Kat I think his name was Kat Dies although he dies because he's shot by a farmer when him and Paul go to steer the goose to eat because they're hungry and that made me angry on a whole other level, because I was like, no, that's not fair, you know, he made it to 
the signing of, just before the signing of the treaty and then he got shot by a farmer, that's stupid, but then there was also Paul dying when it, just as the war was over. Um, it was just so frustrating and yet so well done. I, I These were some of the strongest emotions that I've ever felt watching a film. Now, what else have I got down? Now, this film also really portrayed well the horror of war machines that hadn't really been used before. There's, um, I believe what my friend said, there's this um, f noise that I noticed throughout the whole film, which is like the sounding of an air siren, kind of. And that's... I'm going to sneeze, I'm going to try and carry on talking. It's meant to symbolise the, the new technology that's being used. There is one particular battle scene in the film where tanks are pulled in for the first time and the Germans don't really know what to do. Um, you know, they, they hide in the trenches, they get squashed, they... It, there's a, it's a whole thing, you know, and there are flamethrowers as well, which weren't a war crime at this point. So, it, does, it yet again, it did a really good job of showing how unethical these things are in, in war, especially when one other side doesn't have them. And so, that's what the, that's what this film's about. That's what I remember about this film really well. Now, I am thinking, oh, it's only 10 minutes, that's really short. But yet again, I think I've said all there is to say about this film, and if I carry on rambling and trying to extend the length of this video, then I think I'm going to ruin the review. So I'm going to stop there, and um, I'm interested in hearing from other people who perhaps are more knowledgeable when it comes to war films or have watched this film more recently. I, I mean, this is a film, as I've said many times, where there are many things to be said about it and conversations to be had because of it. So please, wh whatever you think about this film, whatever this film made you think, leave it down in the comments and I'll be really interested to hear what you have to say. And we'll leave this there. Now, I am, um, you might have seen my post on um, for, I think it was Thursday. You might have seen my post on Thursday saying that I'm going to finish The Time of Contempt before Mort because I've been reading multiple books at the same time for a while now and it started getting quite taxing and I've decided enough's enough. I'm going to focus on finishing The Time of Contempt and then I'm just going to read Mort. And then I'm just going to read The Doll's House and then who knows from there. But I don't want to carry on reading multiple books at the same time because it means that they all get read slower, because I'm a slow reader as it is, but having multiple means that they all get finished a lot slower than I'd like them to, because I want to carry on being able to, you know, produce reviews for you. But also, I feel like it ruins the, um, the reading experience a bit. Maybe that's just me, because I will spend loads of time away from one book and then come back to it, and then it's like getting back into the action halfway through, which is what I've been experiencing with The Witcher, so I've decided that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm about three quarters of the way through The Witcher, so you might be able to expect a review of it on Wednesday, although if I don't, I will get it to you by Sunday, at which point it will be done. And I'm excited to talk to, to, talk to you about that. Now, my Witcher videos don't always do, well, they haven't yet done very well, so I don't expect to, um, to have much feedback on that, but I, you know, I really like The Witcher, so hopefully if I have any Witcher fans in the viewership, I'm excited to talk about that with you, and then I should get you more at some point in the foreseeable future, which I'm excited to talk about. All well, the Discord fans that have turned up, which I'm really happy about. I've never had so many comments on my vi my videos, and that's been my um, one of my main... Uh, I, one of the things that's been bothering me most, because I really I, I do all this talking, but I re what I really like to do is hear what you all think. And with my Discord videos, that's been happening a lot, and I love that. So thank you for all of you Discord fans who have turned up to listen to me and talk about Discord with me because I don't actually know anyone apart from my maths teacher who likes Discord so it's really great to have you here so that I can talk to you about it. But um, that's a bit of a side note, Those, that's what you can expect in the future and I will see you all then. Have a good one. Bye!